As you explore the Commonwealth, you stumble upon military checkpoints all over the place. You usually find them along the roads, but not always. Sometimes they're on barges, and sometimes they're in out-of-the-way, tucked-away places. The military checkpoints provide a bit of an endgame experience for those of us who have completed the primary quest of the game, choosing a faction to side with. Once you complete the primary quest, representatives from the faction that you sided with will appear at the military checkpoints dotting the Commonwealth. As you get near to them, you'll often get a miscellaneous quest that says defend the checkpoint. You'll find the checkpoint under attack by a variety of enemies, including other factions that you destroyed throughout the game, or even death claws, ghouls, and other monsters. The fights can be really challenging, especially at higher levels. But they're also very lucrative. The military checkpoints are often strewn with all sorts of ammunition and equipment. There are two types of military checkpoints that I can tell. The first is an actual legitimate checkpoint. You find barricades blocking the road, or you'll find little guard stations and maybe even as scaffolding and towers where soldiers could be stationed to check vehicles that are coming along the road. And the other looks like more of a convoy. The military was escorting the delivery of some goods. Sometimes you'll find cargo crate containers filled with boxes, crates, and other barricades. And sometimes you'll find cages with a leveled power armor inside. The military checkpoints are numerous. They're all over the map. I tried to find a trustworthy map which listed every single military checkpoint in the game, and I actually couldn't find any. I used the IGN map and it wasn't on there. I couldn't find it on the Fallout wiki or anywhere else. These are unmarked locations on your map, and if you're trying to find some, your best bet is to just wander the roads. I can tell you there was one really close to Grey Garden. If you walk to the eastern edge of that settlement, you often get a help defend the checkpoint message because it's so close. There's also one on a barge near Croup Manor, one south of Ten Pines Bluff by the railroad tracks, one north of the slog along the road, and one on a floating barge just northeast of the railroad headquarters. Knowing where these checkpoints are can be helpful, especially when you're lower level. If you destroyed the Institute, say, in your 20s or early 30s, or defeated the Brotherhood of Steel before fully specking out your character. If you stumble upon a tough enemy, you can kite the enemy to the military checkpoint, and then your allies at that checkpoint will actually fight on your behalf. Unlike settlers, the faction soldiers at these checkpoints can die. Settlers can only die if you kill them yourself, or if you have a mod installed that allows them to die. The same is true for caravan guards and wandering merchants. But that's not true with the military checkpoint soldiers. So if you are concerned about keeping these NPCs alive, it's important to respond quickly. Otherwise, you never know, you might stumble upon the checkpoint and it's manned by four death claws and you you have six strewn railroad corpses on the ground because they just couldn't handle it. The flip side to that is that if you sided with a faction that uses a lot of ammunition and gear that you need, this may be a handy way to equip yourself with some of their gear without having to go out and kill them. For example, let's say that you're trying to find a better railroad coat and a better Goss rifle. You can't find a merchant selling it and you don't want to actually kill one of your allies to get that gear. You can go to a military checkpoint and either hope that one of the soldiers dies, or just sit around and wait and see what happens. This can be really useful if you sided with the Institute or the Brotherhood because they tend to use energy weapons, and fusion cells are extremely expensive, so you can just wait for all of your allies to be killed, kill their killers, and then loot everybody's guns and ammunition. Probably not the kind of thing you would want to do if you have a good guy playthrough, but hey, the option is there. Another cool thing about these military checkpoints is that the soldiers of whatever faction you sided with have unique animations. You often find them leaning against the equipment or more often pulling out a blowtorch and doing some spot welding. Uh, there's one checkpoint where a soldier will lean over a situation table as if plotting his or her next move. They'll be searching through the bushes trying to find things. They have a number of unique animations which are fun to watch. So where did these military checkpoints come from, and why do the factions find them so interesting? Well, these are pre-war military checkpoints, so to find out where they came from, we have to go to Fallout lore before the war 
to figure out what went on. One year before the bombs dropped, in 2076, the United States of America declared martial law, according to official Fallout 4 lore. This was because there was severe food and fuel shortages across the nation, which led to protests and riots. So the United States declared martial law. That, I think, can help explain the military checkpoints. Additionally, the day the bombs fell in 2077, at 9.13 a.m., the Integrated Operational Nuclear Detection System, ION-DS, reported four probable nuclear launches from China, which caused the United States to go to DEFCON 2. DEFCON 2 is the second highest state of emergency in preparation for nuclear war. Only four minutes later, at 9.17 a.m., NORAD confirmed the ION-DS report, and the U.S. Armed Forces officially went to DEFCON 1. Bombers were scrambled, they launched their nukes in retaliation, and the military scrambled to move men, ammunition, and equipment across the United States. This, I think, can help partially explain the convoys that we find at military checkpoints, shipping goods, food, ammunition, and power armor. If you go to the West Everett Estates and you find the Turnquist Bunker, inside you find a terminal where the father recounts a diary of the days, weeks, and months after the bombs dropped. We learn that just a week after the bombs dropped, even inside the bunker he could hear gunfire coming from the city and explosions all over the place. So mass panic, chaos, and rioting was going on in the days, weeks, and months that followed after the bombs dropped. During this time, I'm sure the United States military tried to do its best to provide order and keep people in line, and so they probably had a lot of military equipment moving all over the United States at that time. There's only one checkpoint in the game that actually has recorded audio dialogue along with it. It's not a military checkpoint like all of the others. Soldiers from your favorite faction don't appear there, and you don't get miscellaneous quests to defend it, but it is the South Boston checkpoint, and inside the checkpoint you find a lot of ammunition. Here's the radio broadcast from that checkpoint. If you are in distress, please proceed to the South Boston military checkpoint for aid. Coordinates are available in your emergency handbook. This checkpoint has been designated as a safe house in case of enemy invasion, and is currently stocked with additional food, water, and ammunition. This safe house is for military personnel only. Citizens, including non-military family members, will be turned away from matters of national safety. This broadcast likely started the day the bombs dropped, or in the days following the bombs dropping, and was used to coordinate military operations. Note that they strictly forbid civilians from coming there to seek shelter. This, I think, if we were to believe what the Turnquists said in their terminal, was to prevent rioting and looting, and to prevent the military from having to open fire on the civilian population. If you check out the South Boston Checkpoint Terminal, either in the trailer outside or inside the bunker building, we find a note that tells a little bit more about this particular checkpoint. It says that effective August 2077, just before the bombs dropped, all vehicles traveling through designated checkpoints must submit a full stop inspection. So I think this goes beyond just this South Boston checkpoint, but is actually referring to all checkpoints in the Commonwealth. The terminal says that the military will fully inspect suspicious vehicles, even going so far as to dismantle the vehicles. Log entries showed that this particular checkpoint inspected at least four vehicles passing by, three of which were cleared without incident, but the final one, the Wu family, was difficult. We get the impression that the military likely detained them because they looked or sounded Chinese, but ultimately the military didn't find any contraband on their vehicle, and so the military apologized, but the Wu family would have nothing of it. They were acting aggressive, so they were ultimately detained and the military police were called. The other three log entries show that at least at this checkpoint, the military was actually pretty fair. They simply searched the vehicles, and if the subjects weren't suspicious, they just let the vehicles go. This may give us an indication of what the military did at the other checkpoints dotting the Commonwealth. By the way, while you're here, don't forget to get Guns and Bullets issue number three on the desk inside the checkpoint building, and there's a complete leveled list of power armor in the locked cage just outside the building. 
And no, there is no way to turn off the audio broadcast. It is forever annoying. So why do the factions of the game desire these military checkpoints? Well, all I have is speculation. But based on the animations that they have at the checkpoints, we find them doing a lot of spot welding, searching, strategizing, they're probably trying to salvage what they can from the military checkpoints, scrapping some of the military equipment for steel and oil, salvaging power armor, ammunition, and technology, or even using it as a bit of a choke point for better controlling the Commonwealth, making it harder for raider gangs to terrorize the Commonwealth, making it harder for enemy factions to move around the Commonwealth. Often in my railroad game, I'll hear a vertebrate in the sky, and before I even have a chance to find it, the nearby checkpoint has blown it out of the air. So better control of resources, better control of the land, and a show of dominance in Boston. Military checkpoints are not a new thing to Fallout 4. There were military checkpoints in Fallout 3. These were very different. I don't recall them being a great source of ammunition and gear. I do recall that you tended to find a lot of assault rifles at the Fallout 3 military checkpoints, as well as a lot of disposed nuclear material. But they certainly weren't as rich of a treasure trove as the military checkpoints in Fallout 4. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the short, sweet, full story of the military checkpoints in Fallout 4. It's a fun little added bit of endgame material that Bethesda threw our way to keep us entertained even after we destroyed our desired enemy faction. So tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Do you like the military checkpoints? Do you think that the miscellaneous quests are fun or more of a bother? I read all of the comments on my videos, so let me know in the comment section below. I release a new video every single day of the week, so if you like this video, please subscribe so that you're notified each time I release a brand new video. And if you liked what you saw and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to my private Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video. Thanks so very much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning bright and early with a brand new video.